My name is Grace Cisna. I'm a CPA on Sapwick Projection Hub and creator of this template. And I wanted to take a little time to walk you through our landscaping business financial projection Excel template. When you download this template, first thing you'll notice is there are several tabs shown here along the bottom. Uh, the first is an instructions tab, and then we have the input tabs shown in this light blue color here, and the output tab shown in green. Let's start on the input assumptions tab in light blue. On all of these input tabs, you're going to see that there are corresponding cells in that same light blue color. And there is data loaded already into a lot of these cells. And this is just example data to show you what kind of information we're looking for. So on all these input tabs, you will fill out the data in light blue and it will produce your financial projections for you on those green output tabs. So on the input assumptions tab, we are looking for company name, projection start date, annual inflation rate for operating expenses, information about different investment into your company, your accounts receivable terms, your inventory terms, information about the fixed assets that you will purchase, including their name, their value, their life expectancy, and salvage cost, which are all going to help us calculate depreciation expense, as well as the month that they are purchased. When you see a month zero here, that means that you're going to purchase it before your operations start. Um, you can see that for the personal investment as well. If you're investing before your operations start or as your operations start, you can use month zero to signify that. Beneath the fixed assets, you will have four different boxes in which you can input loans, um, whether that's a mortgage or financing for a vehicle um, or a small business loan. You have four different areas to input those loans, as well as their number of monthly payments, their interest rate, and the month that the payments will begin. The input revenue and cost of sales tab is the revenue model, um, which feeds through to the income statement as well as the cash flow statement. So in this revenue model, we first show how you're going to build a client base. And then we talk about the different types of service revenue that you provide, as well as the associated costs for those revenue. And then we look at other revenue. So in the client base, um, we first determine your advertising spending. So your advertising spending is going to be coming from our other expenses tab, which is the next tab to the right. And then we're going to look at a cost to attract one new client, which is also known as customer acquisition costs or just acquisition cost. And then you will see um, the number of first time clients per month due to advertising. So these are essentially our paid clients every month, clients that you're acquiring due to paid advertising. And then there's organic clients or referrals, um, in this case set to 200% of um, clients from paid advertising. And these are going to be clients coming from either Google searches or because you have um, clients telling, um, telling others about your business. So then we'll look at your total first time clients and then a certain percentage of those clients are going to become regular clients. And then a certain percentage of your regular clients are going to leave every month either because they move or go with a different service or decide to do um, services themselves. So we're going to show the build up of your regular customer base here in row 27. As you can see there is some seasonality to our customer base and that is because there is some seasonality built into our advertising as well. So we'll talk about that a little bit on the other expenses tab when we get there. In addition to seasonality in the advertising there's also going to be seasonality in your services that you provide. Um, so if you're in the Midwest, like I am, most of your landscaping services are going to occur, occur in the summer months. And so you've got 100% of the year to deal with, and then you can sort of meter out those services in this blue bar here by saying what percent of your total annual services are going to happen each month. Um, so in this case, June, July, and August are the most popular months, with 16% of the services happening in those months. And then May and September, October and April all kind of border those amounts and then 3% per year in the winter months um, and that's perhaps if you have a uh, snow removal business as a part of your business or um, you just have some winter upkeep as well. Um, if you live somewhere where it's warm all year this may look very different for you. Once we've set the seasonality ratios um, we're going to move down into the different services that you provide. You're going to list those all in this blue box here so you've got lots of room for it. Um, if you provide more services than this, I recommend just putting them into basic categories and not spending too much time creating a really long list here. So you're going to enter the types of services you provide, the number of clients who use this service each year. Um, so maybe you're mostly a mowing-based service. 
and you'd have two types of services, mowing small yard and mowing large yard. And you could do 50-50 on this. Um, you could do 20-80, whatever it is. Um, and these here can all sum up to more than 100% if your typical client uses more than one service. Um, so maybe you have a typical client who usually um, hires you to mow their lawn, but they also have, you know, you have a tree trimming service so thrown in there. So if I sum all of these up, it looks like 102%. So on average, most of your clients are only paying you for one service, but some are paying you for a little extra. So then we look at the average annual revenue per client. And so that's how much a single client will spend on this service each year. And then the cost of labor, so how much it costs you to provide, to pay people to provide those services for your clients. And the cost of materials as well. So that's pretty self-explanatory. Beneath this, we're gonna have an area for you to enter the annual increase um, for your revenue per customer, your labor cost per customer, and your materials cost per customer. And then there's a nice summary chart here to show you what this means. So in year one, um, the average revenue per customer is $710 per customer. And that is a result of these two categories here. Um, so essentially this is doing a weighted average of these items and figuring out the average revenue per customer 710. And then using this 5% growth per year, it creates the average revenue per customer for each year. And the same for the labor costs and the materials. Once this is determined, the model will look at the number of customers you have each month multiply that by the percentage of annual services happening in that month, and then multiply it by the average revenue per customer per year to get your services revenue for each month. So you can see here, this is taking in the seasonality um, and that the summer months are obviously much more profitable than the winter months. And that will happen every year. The cost of labor and cost of materials are gonna follow the same pattern. If you have any other revenue that's not related to landscaping services, whatever that may be, maybe you rent out some equipment or um, rent out warehouse space or something like that, you can enter that here um, and it will just calculate across. The input other expenses tab also allows for some seasonality as you can see. Um, we have the advertising category, which is first, and that needs to stay in the first spot here because it gets pulled through to the revenue and cost of sales tab. And so you can enter the operating expenses for every month for your first year of business. And then you have the option to say if the pattern is going to repeat each year. And if it is, you can use an annual growth rate. Um, so for example, advertising, you're going to advertise every year and it's going to increase at 5% per year. But legal expenses, $5,000 in the first month, those might be just the cost of incorporating and getting a new business off the ground. You won't have those costs every year. So here we said they are not going to repeat each year. There are two ways to calculate um, expenses. They can either be fixed expenses like these first two, or they can be calculated as a percentage of revenue, so just credit card fees. So credit card fees right now are set to 2% of total revenue. So in each month, it's just going to multiply 0 0.02 times your total revenue. And that will repeat each year, but not increase, as you can see that in 0% here. Your other options are creating this um, either as fixed, a percentage of total revenue, a percentage of just your services revenue, or percentage of just your other revenue. You can also enter your effective income tax rate down here. The last input tab is the input salaries and owner draw. Um, any salaried employees can be entered here. You as the owner can obviously pay yourself a salary, or in some cases you're able to pay yourself just by drawing funds out of the business. And if you choose to do that, you can enter those in the owner draw section down here. Now that we've filled out all the light blue input tabs, we can look at the at a glance tabs and the other um, output tabs. So once you've filled everything in light blue, you're done. All you've got to do is look at your data. So the at a glance tab has some nice summary graphs and charts. Um, you can see this is our sales forecast for year one, that seasonality that's happening. Same with the operating cash flow, very similar amount there. And then some summaries for the use of funds and expenses. The next three tabs are the financial statement summary. So we have an income statement, a cash flow statement, and a balance sheet. And the summaries are gonna be the annual summary showing the five years right next to each other. So you can see our services revenue, other revenue, all of our costs of goods sold, and then other operating expenses here. 
The cash flow statement is very similar to the income statement, but it does include items like new loans and cash from investments, and those items don't show up on a income statement. The balance sheet is going to show your assets and liabilities as well as your equity. Note, one of the hardest parts about creating financial projections on your own is that it's really hard to balance a balance sheet. Um, our templates are built so that everything flows through correctly and your balance sheets are always going to balance, so that's not something you have to worry about. This is just going to do all that work for you. We then have those same three financial statements, the income statement, the cash flow statement, and the balance sheet, but broken out into the um, full month-to-month -month format. So you can see every month for all of five years. So this helps, especially with a seasonal business, to see um, how your revenue changes throughout the year. So this is year five right here. And you can see your services revenue obviously peaks in the middle of the year and then decreases back down as the year goes on. And the same for a lot of your expenses. And again, the cash flow statement, similar to the income statement with a few differences. And then the balance sheet, balancing every year. That is a brief overview of our landscaping business template. Um, I hope this was a helpful overview for you. If this template looks good to you, but maybe um, you need a few modifications or your business offers additional or different services, I'd be happy to modify this template for you. Please reach out to us at support at projectionhub.com and we're always available to modify the template. We can also help you fill it out if you're short on time or you just prefer, prefer that your projections were CPA prepared. Um, reach out to us and we're happy to provide those services as well.